dictators hope the most that you lose your hope. So one thing I want to reply to those dictators, I'm not going to lose my hope. That was Wu Kaixi, one of the student leaders of pro-democracy protests in Beijing's Tiananmen Square in 1989. Chinese authorities violently crushed the protest. Wu Kaixi was a wanted man. Now living in exile in Taiwan, he was in Phoenix last week for the world premiere of Tiananmen, a musical about the students behind the protests and their struggle for freedom. We talked about the musical's message, signs that Beijing is watching, and why he still hopes to see his parents again for the first time in 34 years. This is an edited version of our conversation. So let, let's start with the history. After the Chinese authorities crushed uh, the protests, they made you number two on their most wanted lists yes. of pro-democracy students. Why were you targeted? Well, uh, I think it's kind of fair for them to target me because I was one of the founders of the student movement. I was also one of the founders for the student organizations, and then I was also one of the founders of the hunger strike. So uh, yes, um, now I think the Communist Party got it right. And let's uh, put a little reminder here. It wasn't the time of internet. We didn't have mobile phone at that time. <clears throat> So uh, it really tells us the eager of the students and the people of China at that time, the end of 80s, in 1989. Uh, the 80s is a time of change and reform. And then because open and reform has been the slogan of Chinese Communist Party, we thought that we want the same thing. And then they demonstrated us with real ammunition and tanks rolling off people that it's total, it's so off limit. Uh, uh, from what we demand. So let's talk about the production now. Here we are yes. 34 years later yes. in Phoenix, Arizona, mm -hmm. a musical about Tiananmen. This is probably mm -hmm. one of the most unlikely places for the debut of this musical. What's the short story of how it ended up mm -hmm. here? I wouldn't say this is one of the most unlikely place. I mean, this, place, this musical uh, happening anywhere in the world is, should be normal, should be reasonable. And then I'm glad it happens here in Phoenix. Uh, well, uh, I was contacted by one of the uh, uh, producers of this show in the very early stage, before mm -hmm. it was a show. And then uh, it says, like, I'm thinking of putting together this. Would you be interested? Would you like, will be willing to help? Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to take part in? And I was like, are you kidding? to remind people of an unfinished business in such an artistic way. It's something that I owe you gratitude. I have to say thank you. Mm. Do you ask me, do I want to be part of it? 100%. Yeah. So that's how we started about a year ago. How much of it is your story? No, no, we, we decided to make this uh, American uh, uh, you know, audience a story. It's not, first of all, it's not going to be a history class. You will learn a great deal of history, for sure, but it's not, a two hours of musical is not a boring history, uh, history lecture that you're gonna, you will see it through like the, the lens of, um, you know, music, dancing, uh, beautiful love stories, and of course, emotional ending that make the contrast. The ending, of course, we already know, it's a massacre. It's the crackdown, bloody crack, crackdown by the Chinese government to contrast the hope, the bravery, and then the innocence of, of the Tiananmen students. So Americans' knowledge of their own history isn't that good, let alone foreign history. How do you <laughs> think audiences here are gonna connect with well, this story? It would be normal for we have a distance understanding of anything 34 years ago, let alone it's a foreign story. But I'm sure American people remember something about Tiananmen. If you live through that period, or maybe in the younger generation, the textbook will tell you one or two things well, about there's, Tiananmen. Well, there's the image. Yes, there's the image. The, the tank man. Perhaps but one nobody of the, knows yes. what happened. That was an incredibly so, powerful so, image, but nobody yes, knows. Yes, yes, You yes. might know the story yes. of how that happened. So people would uh, fill in the blank. Uh, between that image that we all agree is one of the most important image of the 20th century. And perhaps the Tiananmen students serve as one of the most event, important events that ended Cold War. 
Uh, so all these things, but we only have that image or some more images, uh, and then we have to fill in the blanks. I would like with this musical to help fill in that blank on something, with only two hours, again, not a history lecture, but we want you to know that something resonates to me the most about those uh, uh, 50 days in Tiananmen Square. That is bravery, that is hope. And then, of course, I give you a, a storyline, which we did well, too, I think. There's also what looks like an international incident surrounding the play. The yes. person, the actor who was supposed to be the lead, yes. uh, Evan Pizer, uh, sorry, Zachary. Zachary, Zachary Pizer. Pizer. Yeah. While he was in China on a concert tour, pulled out. Yes. And that wasn't too, that was what, just a few weeks ago? Yes, three weeks ago, yeah, something like Do that. Do you know why? It's regrettable to see this. I mean, three weeks before the premiere pulled himself out is, let's say, at least a little unprofessional. And then, uh, uh, and then we, re we really hope that doesn't happen. But it actually serves a good footnote to tell us how much a taboo Tiananmen is to Beijing regime. Why? Because it's the same regime. It is the same regime that com committed massacre 34 years ago. I mean, different people, they change their faces, but that is the continuous of same regime, and then they should be held responsible, and then they still refuse to have the dialogue about what happened. Even a musical in America, performed by an American artist, for them is something they cannot uh, uh, tolerate. And then what do you do when you cannot tolerate? You intimidate one of the member of the cast. That make them a classic bully. Uh, and uh, you know how what bully uh, responds well? Mm -hmm. You stand uh, strong against him. So, uh, so that's, I think, I would like to uh, congratulate the, ta the cast. They, they decide to stay on and perform. And so how does that ripple through the cast and the production itself, knowing that China's watching? Uh, this is a typical Streisand effect uh, story mm -hmm. that, you know, as you said, like uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, there's this musical of Tian called Tiananmen is playing on. Of course, it's a beautiful show, and we, w we, want, to, we want the whole world to know about this. Mm -hmm. And then Chinese government is helping us and giving us a perfect platform to say, see, we are still the big bully today. And then if you don't believe us, go watch that musical. I think, I think that's the message from Chinese government. I urge you to get it and watch the musical. You haven't seen your parents in 34 years. What would it mean to you for them to see this musical? Uh, uh, oof. What would it mean to, for them to see anything in my life? My children, their grandsons, my, um, myself, uh, of course. Um, anything that related. If, what I would give to, for a chance for them to see this musical or anything that's happening in my life. So many, uh, 34 years is, is not a short time. Uh, and then it has been a, glamorous 34 years for me, although one of the biggest regrets is I cannot share those glamorous moments with my parents mm. and then how much I want to do it. Um, it's not a short time for me. It's certainly not a short time for them. Well, they are not getting any younger or healthier. They're in their, their 80s now. Mm. I hope they live a long life. Um, uh, do you think you will ever see them? I really don't know. Okay. I hope. I certainly hope. And then I hope, yes. <laughs> uh, dictators hope the most that you lose your hope. So one thing I want to reply to those dictators, I'm not going to lose my hope. Tiananmen, a new musical, is scheduled to run at the Phoenix Theater Company through October 29th. You can get ticket information at phoenixtheater.com.
You can also catch that full interview and all of our Sunday Square Off coverage on 12news.com or on our YouTube channel. Go to 12news.com slash YouTube. That's our show for this week. Thanks very much to all of our guests. Thank you so much for joining us. See you back here next week.